going. It's time now for the Pulaski Apostolic Church with Pastor Doty. You can reach them at 4959 Old Robinson Track Road here in Pulaski at 24301. You can call them at 540-626-9096 or 540-922-5627. And now, live from Studio B, here is Pastor Doty and the Pulaski Apostolic Church. Praise the Lord, everyone. So glad you're listening. Glad you can join us. And uh, every second Sunday, we have our youth to do the singing and to do the offering, and they do the preaching. We have just a wonderful time, and we are going to share a little bit of that with you this morning because they're going to help us sing here this morning before we get to the Word. But we're going to open up with prayer just real quick, and, and we'll start singing and let you hear and listen and be a part of it. And we invite you to join us every Sunday, of course, at 10 a.m. and Sunday evening at 6 p.m. as well. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this wonderful day, this opportunity, Lord, to share the word, Lord God. We ask you to have your perfect will, perfect way. Let your word go forth with power and authority, Lord God. We worship you and we honor you, Lord Jesus. We bless your wonderful name in Jesus' mighty name. that was there today and it's such a special special time in the Lord to see the the kids uh, singing and praising God and we even had some preaching today and we were blessed by their word and we're blessed by the, the everything that the kids do for us we have a like brother Benedict was stating I, we have a youth service every second Sunday of the month and and that service is when the kids uh, participate. They lead the worship. And they also uh, lead the service. And uh, we get to hear them uh, preaching and just doing uh, whatever. So we do want to encourage and we want to ask each and every one to come and, and be with us and worship with us uh, the second Sunday of, of each month. Well, I've been praying about a message that I want to deliver today. And 
I don't know who heard uh, last week's message, but this kind of goes hand in hand with last week's message, but this also goes hand in hand with the messages that we preach uh, quite often. And before I, I go into it, I want to talk to someone today. I did this last week, and I'm probably going to be continuing to do this. I, I believe there is someone out there listening to this message today uh, that when they hear the words uh, oneness apostolic, uh, they know that they need to be part of that. They know that they're missing something in their life because uh, maybe they come in that way. Maybe they grew up that way. Maybe maybe that blanket was pulled out from under them and, and they're listening to this today and, and that's not where they're at. And I just want to encourage you today that... Uh, God has a word for you, and and that, that is that you need to come home. Hallelujah. You need yes. to you need to be where where God uh, uh, drawed you and showed you the enlightened you, and you need to just continue in that word. And uh, uh, we don't uh, we don't have any desire whatsoever to to take away from churches. We don't have any desire to to cause any confusion. We don't have any desire to hurt anyone. We love everyone. Hallelujah. We love people. Yes. And uh, uh, I just I just thoroughly believe that there's someone out there that that doesn't uh, doesn't feel like they're at home, and they need to be at home. You know the Bible says in Acts two and I believe it's forty two. He says that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and we 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 want to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And uh, when when you get up here and when you get when you get up here and you speak and you say words like uh, oneness apostolic, then what that means is is I'm going to continue in this doctrine, in the doctrine of the apostolic church, the the oneness doctrine. Well, what does that mean? Some people knows what that means. And again, I want to reiterate that if you already know what that means, if you already know the words that we preach and the messages that we preach and the doctrine that we teach, and, and you know that you're not part of that, you need to be part of that today. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, you yeah. know how to find us and you know yeah. how to reach us. And, and you need to just come home. God is telling you to come home. Now, we again, I want to reaffirm also that I love everyone. I love everybody. And sometimes my message is not received very well by everyone and everybody. But I will. I want to challenge you today, and I want to challenge everybody listening to this today, mm -hmm. yes. um, that if you claim Christianity in any way, shape, or form, you don't have a choice but to love me back. Yes. No matter what I say, right. no matter what I do, if you say you're a Christian, then you must love me like I am declaring my love for you. It doesn't yes. matter what uh, what we say or what we do, but we have to love one another. Yeah. Jesus loved us so much so that he died for us. Yes. And we must love one another. He actually said, this is how you can tell if you, if you are his disciples or not, if you have love one for another. So I want to challenge you today that if you might hear a thing or two that you don't agree with or that you don't like that comes from that comes from this pulpit when I'm preaching, if you claim Christianity, you don't have a choice but to love me. Amen? Yes, amen. You have to love me. You may not like what I'm saying. You may not like what I'm doing. But you must love me. Amen. Yes. Well, let's, let's pray over the word one more time real quick before we preach this message today. Lord Jesus, mighty Thank God. You, Jesus. We ask you today, God, that this word to be received, with this word to be received in hearts today, God. Change us, God, with the preaching of your word today, God. Help us to remove the scales from our eyes, God, and see what you have for us in your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, I'm, I spoke last week about what it means to be apostolic with regards to the gospel. I'm going to always share the gospel yes. message of Jesus Christ, of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We apply the gospel message to our life through repentance, through baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost as stated in Acts 2.38. Yes. We apply the gospel to our our life for salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 says we are saved by the gospel. The gospel is preached for everyone. The gospel occurred for everyone, but everyone's not saved. We must apply it to our life. 
So when I get up here and say that we are a oneness apostolic church, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you what a lot of people says it means. A lot of people calls us Jesus only. And I want to just challenge that today because we're not Jesus only. We're Jesus everything. Yeah, we amen, believe amen. that Jesus is yeah. the almighty God manifested in the flesh. That is exactly what the Bible says. But God has always declared his oneness throughout time. From Genesis to Revelation, you'll find God Hallelujah. declaring his oneness. Yeah. In Isaiah 44 and 6, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Yeah. There is no God beside God. God is one. I'm only going to scratch the surface of this due to time. But if you wanted to do a thorough study of this, yes. I want to encourage you to do a thorough study of this. Listen, the Bible says that we are to seek out our own salvation, right? Hallelujah. Our own salvation with fear and trembling. It's so vitally important that you seek this out for yourself. We are to study, the Bible says, to show themselves approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. When we stand before judgment, uh, uh, we're not going to be able to stand with the preacher that we listen to and say, but he told me this, but he told me that. This preacher uh, steered me wrong or this preacher steered me or whatever. You are standing in judgment alone and with the word of God. It is entirely up to you to work out your own yes, salvation. Yes, Go yes. to the word. Study the word. Study what I'm saying today. All I'm going to give you today is scriptures. I'm going to sit and read scriptures to you. You draw the conclusion for yourselves. But this is the scriptures, a few of them that we scratch, uh, scratch the surface with. Psalms 86 and 10 says, For thou art great and doest wonderful things. Thou art God alone. Thou art God alone. There's so many people has a mindset of one God, two God, three gods, multiple gods, right. persons of right. a Godhead, multiple persons of a single Godhead, two persons within a Godhead. God it clearly states in his word that he is alone. Yeah. Zechariah 14 and 9 says, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. Yes. One. This is why we preach and this is why with passion we preach the oneness of God. The oneness of God. God's oneness is very important to him. God's oneness should be very important to us. Uh, uh, in Isaiah 43, I'm going to read verses 10 and 11, and this is very profound. I want you to pay attention to this. Ye are my witness, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Well, you know, if you search out the books and you start reading who's he talking about there, I think it's pretty obvious who's he talking about. This is the prophetic words of Jesus Christ. The prophetic words was all throughout the Bible in the book of Isaiah. Uh, the Isaiah, the prophet, spoke a lot, a great deal about the Messiah. And he says, uh, uh, saith the Lord, my servant, who I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. God uh, uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 declared that when the Messiah is coming, uh -huh. it will be him. Yes. It will be him. Not another person in a Godhead. Not a, not a smaller God. Not a subordinate God. Not another God in any way, shape, or form. God wants to make it very clear yes. that he yes. is one, even I even am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. There is no Savior besides God. God Almighty is the Savior. He's yes. the Creator. Yes. He's the Father. He's Hallelujah. the Son. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Provider. He is the He is the Peacemaker. He has many titles that go with God. Uh, uh, in in the book of Deuteronomy six and four, there's what we call the Shema. The Shema is Hear, O Israel. The Lord, our God, is one Lord. Well, preacher, that's the Old Testament. You know, a lot of things change when Jesus come into the picture. No, it didn't. 
written in Mark 12 and 29, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is, is one, one Lord. Yes. Jesus yes. made it very clear yes. that the most yes. important thing that you could ever establish in your mind is God's oneness. Oh, God Jesus. is Jesus. one. God is one. One. Listen to this prophecy. Again, Isaiah prophet prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. In Isaiah 9 and 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. I want to rewind just real quick, just for a second. Let us understand this. Listen, you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You have to study to show this, to uh, study the word for yourself. You have to work this out for yourself. But you need to go and read Isaiah 9 and 6. And you need to pray and you need to ask the Holy Ghost, what does this mean? The Holy Ghost will tell you what this means. For unto us a child is born. His name shall be called the Everlasting. Everlasting Father. The Son is the Father. Listen, I'm a father. I have two sons. I am a father. That doesn't make me a separate person because I'm also a son. I have parents. I had parents. They're both deceased. But at one point in time, I was their son. I was the son of man, but I'm also a father of men. I have Children, I have a wife. What makes me a husband? I have nephews and nieces. That makes me an uncle. That doesn't make me four persons. It doesn't make me five persons. Amen. These are relationship right. titles. Right. Yes. Titles. Titles were used yes. for so we understand the, the, the purposes of, of what a person is doing. When, with my relationship to my children, I am their father. But my relationship to my parents, I am their son. Yes. Father and son are relationship titles. They don't imply different people. They are relationship titles. God the Father. Now many people will use this terminology. And I mean I want to stress this. And I, this is why I keep saying study the Bible for yourself. I want you to go and look through the Bible and find the phrase God the Son. Find the phrase God the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. You will not find it. From Genesis to Revelation, you will not find the phrase God the Son, God the Spirit. You will find God the Father. When you hear terms like God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, that is biblical terminology, non-biblical terminology. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost is not listed in anywhere in your Bible. God the Father is. Sons and Father, Son and Father is titles, is titles. I want to talk to you a little bit about the man Christ Jesus. The man. Who yes, was yes. the man Christ yes. Jesus? Well, listen to this. In 1 Timothy 2 and 5, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Not the God Christ Jesus. Right, right. The man, man Christ Jesus. And Galatians 3 and 20 reiterates that. It says, Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. The God is one. First Timothy, again, there is but one God. There's only one God, folks. Only one God. Yes. There's Amen. not two. There's not three. Amen. When you, you can't use words like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and not make, be making the declaration that there are three gods. Uh, uh, I, I've, heard, I've heard many, many, many times uh, different theologies or views of this theology tried to be described. And every single time, it comes right back to the fact of them saying God is not one. God is one. Yeah, he's man, not yeah. he's not multiple persons. There is no big God little God concept. Uh, he is one. God is yeah. one. Yeah. First Timothy three and sixteen says this, and without controversy. Mm -hmm. Listen, this is something we can't argue about. Right. 
God wants to make it very clear. There's no controversy here. And without controversy, yes. great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in, in the flesh. flesh. He was justified in the spirit, seen of angels, Hallelujah. preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. You don't have to do much study to know who he's talking about there, right? right, right. We know that's Jesus. Yes. We know that that's Jesus. But let's back up to the beginning of that. Without controversy, God was manifest in the flesh. What that means is, first of all, let's look at the word God for a second there. I want you to understand when you see the word God, that comes from El Elohim or El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the Almighty One. The Almighty. Listen, uh, uh, all we have to do is just ponder this for a second. How, could you? Is it even remotely possible to have more than one Almighty? Is it, is, it, is it likely that God would come up with one or two Almighties and then three Almighties? You cannot have more than one Almighty. Right. Almighty right. means superior. Right. Almighty right. is a term, a singular right. term. Right. It means it is the mightiest. It's the one mighty thing among everything else. Yes. So God wants to make it very clear. When you see the name God, when you see the actually the word God, that just simply means the Almighty One. God, the Almighty One. God, the Almighty One. God was manifest in the flesh. It's only possible to have one God. It's not possible to have two gods. As soon as you go to two gods, you have to put a small g on the word gods. But you cannot have one capital G God and then another capital G God beside. God himself makes this declaration and says, beside me, there is no other. Uh, Romans 3 and 30 says, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. We want to be careful on how we study this and how we look at this. I want us to understand and I want us to see this. I am again I'm I'm mainly just reading scriptures. I mean I might talk a little bit in between, but I'm just giving you and I am literally scratching the surface. Anybody would be interested in a Bible study? Talk to me. Call me. Talk to me about this. Uh, I would love to talk to someone about this. But I want you to understand today that God is not is not changed. God is the same yesterday, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, yes, today, Hallelujah. and forever. Well, who was Jesus then? Jesus was the Son of God, right? The Son of God was God manifest in the flesh. Yes. When you see the Son of God, the Son of God existed for 33 years here on this earth. That was the manifestation of God Almighty. God had to be manifested because the Bible even says that God is a spirit. Yes. He that worships him, worships him in spirit and in oh, hallelujah, truth. Hallelujah. And in truth. There's a certain yes. sound to that truth, Brother Benedict. A certain yes. sound to it that, yes. that just it just rings in the ear. When someone hears this message that I'm preaching today, when I'm talking to someone out there in Radio Land, when you, you're hearing this and, and there's a certain sound that's coming across your ears and, and something that just, uh, that just makes you want to just uh, jump up and shout. It makes yes. you want to just jump Amen. up and praise God because when you hear this message, yes. you know. You know yes. there's something to this. You know there's something to the oneness of God. It's not, it's not what everybody else preaches, I know. And I think that's unfortunate because you, without unity, the devil has victory. Right. We need unity. We need yes, to be unified as a church body. Hallelujah. And unfortunately, there's, there's, there's division of, amongst, amongst the church today. I don't believe it's, it's, uh, it's beneficial to have division. Uh, but I do want to, to sh show you some more scriptures today. I want you to take with you and into your study and find this and search this out for yourself. John 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was is in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. With well, that scripture right there, those 
few verses just clearly stated that Jesus was God Almighty. Yes. Uh, uh, but if you if you have any doubts of who he's talking about there, you can skip down. He talks a little bit about John the Baptist and his purpose, but you skip right on down to verse 14 of that same chapter. And it says, And the Word was made flesh yes. and dwelt among us. Uh -huh. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes, yes, full yes. of grace and truth. Like I said, I could talk so much more about this. I'm just scratching the surface. But listen, this word very, very, very clearly declares that God manifested in the flesh. That's who Jesus is. When you see, when you see phrases uh, like the Son of God, the Son, listen, unless you believe the false doctrine of, of Mary being the mother of God uh, and, and that she is some sort of deity, then you uh, have to understand that the Son of God is terminology that makes a description of who He was. The man, Christ Jesus, is the Son of God. The man, Christ Jesus, is the manifestation of God. The manifestation of God is described as the Son of God, all throughout the Word. Let me give you another challenge for you to take today and study with your Bible. If you have a red letter Bible edition, red letters we know were words in red spoken by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Go to your red letter edition Bible. Yes. Go to the book of Matthew. Search all your red letters. See how many times Jesus described himself as the Son of God. If Once you determine that number is zero, then you go to the book of Mark and you look at all your red letters in the book of Mark and you see how many times Jesus described himself as the Son of God. Right. Once you determine that number is zero, you go to the book of Luke. The book of yes. Luke is a very yes. thorough descriptive uh, 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 gospel. Very thorough, very dis uh, script descriptive. You go to the book of Luke and you look at all of your red letters and see how many times in the book of Luke that Jesus referred himself as the Son of God. When you determine that number was zero, you'll go back at those three chapters, those three books and see how many times he refers him to himself as the Son of Man. Numerous times throughout the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man. What that simply means is humanity. Yes, humanity. Right. God was manifested Hallelujah. in the flesh as humanity for a season. He was manifested as a human. He described himself. The other, the other only five times in, the, in all of Jesus' words where he described himself as the Son of God, he was referring to what others called him. What others, and that's only in the book of John. Only in the book of John was it recorded that Jesus described himself as the Son of God, referring to what others called right. him. But listen, listen, he referred himself many times as the Son of Man. The Son of Man. The manifestation of God was Jesus yes, Christ walking here on the earth as the Son of Man. Colossians 1 and 15, quickly, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Jesus Christ was the in image of the invisible God. Hebrews 1 and 3, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of of his person. Jesus Christ was the image of God. The, yes. the a spirit can't can't hang on a cross, Brother Bendham. A spirit can't die. A spirit right. can't bleed. Yes. Uh, God needed to die. God needed to bleed. So God had to manifest mm -hmm. as a fleshly being. Mm -hmm. That fleshly manifestation is referred to as the Son of God. In Revelation 4 and 2, and boy, that clock is spinning faster than helicopter blades. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my best to get what I have out today, but I encourage you today to go and study this for yourself. Revelation 4 and 2 says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. One sat on the f throne. Hallelujah. So many people has this concept of three thrones in heaven. There's not three thrones in heaven. There's one throne in heaven. Yes. Real quickly, Hallelujah. Revelation 1 and 8. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. That's the one that sat on the throne. Do you know what the book of Revelation is? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. One sat on the throne. Who was that one? Well, you know who saw Jesus Christ 
firsthand, you know, who saw Jesus in the flesh walking upon the earth? That would be J John. John, John traveled with him for three and a half years. John was the oldest living disciple. In Revelations 1 and verse 17 and 18, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He that liveth and was dead. That's Jesus, friend. Jesus. That's who he saw on the throne. There's a great description in the, in the uh, descriptive story there in the, in the chapter 1 of Reve the book of Revelation where it describes what Jesus looked like. He's standing there. He's looking like uh, 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 his, his entire description is being told in the book of Revelation. He's being told exactly who is standing there. But he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. All right, we're just going to we're going to go off the air here, but I just want to encourage you today to go and search out the oneness of God today. And they're going to sing a song as we as we close out in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Thank you, God. You have been listening to the Pulaski Apostolic Church with Pastor Doty. You can reach the church at 4959 Old Robinson Track Road here in Pulaski, Virginia at 24301. Or you can phone them at 540-626-9096 or... 540-922-5627 and you can listen to them every Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning Sunday afternoon isn't it yes at WBLB at 12 o'clock WBLB AM 1340.